All right, nail crew, here we are. I have another school vlog for you. I have been studying hard, even at work. <laughs> I bring my book to work and I study in between patients. You know the nail love is real when you study at work. All right, nail crew, so I'm at class, and guess who came with me today? Nala! <laughs> She's so much more portable than Becky. I just put her in my bag, and she was ready to go. So I was just practicing with different nail forms and different lengths and shades, and this is what I came up with. I still have a lot of practicing to do, but you know what? It was fun. Then I got a pedicure from this little lovely student here. She's new and she needed someone to practice on. So I was like, uh, here, me, duh. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to. Like you could do like this and just the machine for the acrylic. All right, so class was so fun today. I did a pedicure, I practiced on Nala, and I also received a pedicure. But now I'm home, I have my book, I have this pen. Who remembers these pens? Like, I love them, these quad pens with all the different color inks. I also have cold pizza, like, I'm ready to go. So in today's vlog, we're gonna talk about electric filing and drill bits. That is chapter 15 in this Milady book. Now remember, the link to the book is down below. So you can click on it, download it, save it, and follow along with me because I'm not gonna be able to go through like every detail of this book. There is just way too many drill bits, way too many details to discuss, but I am gonna give you guys a really quick overview. And hopefully that will inspire you guys to go further and study these drill bits and read about them and learn about them for your own, okay? But like I said, we're going to do a really quick overview. Here is the book. I do have some highlighting because I studied this chapter earlier, so we're going to go into detail about the things that I highlighted, all right? All right, nail crew, let's jump right on into the drill bit part of the video. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about the drill. Now I already did a drill review. So this is the McCart drill. I will leave that video and that link below in case you guys want to find out more about this drill, okay? But in order to use the drill bit, you have to have a drill. So here's a drill that I'm going to use. And the first thing that I wanna talk to you guys about is the RPM, which is the speed. So RPM stands for revolutions per minute. That's how much or how fast it turns or rotates in a minute okay and normally you can get about zero to thirty-five thousand rpms so think of it like the speedometer on the car you could go from zero to whatever 160 miles per hour right same thing here with the drill and you just turn it up on this drill with this little knob here left to turn it down right to turn it all the way up and most nail techs are gonna live right somewhere in the middle where i have that okay another important thing you guys want to look for when you're getting a new drill is the torque this is just the power of the machine and the ability for it to keep on turning when you're applying pressure during filing so sometimes when you put the drill on your nail and you start to file if you have a cheaper nail drill or maybe a lower end nail drill it might stop turning Turning, and then you find yourself having to turn the knob up and get more RPMs, right? But you don't want to have to do that. You should be able to leave your RPMs somewhere in the middle, put the drill on the fingernail and still be able to file the nail. It should not stop. So in addition to RPM and torque, another thing that you want to look for in a hand drill is that the hand piece is very light. So this one should be about four to six ounces, okay? When you measure the hand piece, you don't want it too heavy and bulky. Otherwise, that can set you up for carpal tunnel and wrist injuries, all right? You also wanna make sure that the hand piece does not vibrate too much. That will also set you up for wrist injuries, hand injuries, and also some trauma to your client. So this hand piece is very light and there is hardly any vibration. So once you figure out the drill that you're gonna purchase, then you wanna look into drill bits. So these drill bits that I have are from McCart. Thank you again, McCart, for sending me these drill bits. I really do appreciate it and I will put all of them to use. So I have some carbide drill bits and I also have some ceramic drill bits. Another batch of drill bits that you guys might be familiar with, let me show you these. These 
normally come with your drill. So if you have bought any drill, nine out of 10, it came with these drill bits. These type of drill bits are very good for beginners because they are less harsh and abrasive on the actual nail. So if you notice, look at these sanding bands at the top. Some of them are super coarse, like the ones to the left, and then the ones to the right, those look a little bit more medium, medium grit. And then the one in the middle, to me, with my naked eye, this one that I'm touching here, it looks a little bit more fine, okay? So to make that make sense, I'm going to show you on this hand file. So one side is 100 grit and the other side is 180 grit. Let me open it, take it out this package, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so now that it's out the wrapper, you can see it a little bit better. One side has 100 grit, that's the more coarse side. One side has 180 grit, that's the side that I was just touching. So this side in the back is the 100 grit side. It's more coarse. You see that? You see how it just looks a little bit more rough, right? So if you were really to file and sand down a nail, you would use the 100 grit side. So that's the same as this. So the coarse ones that I'm touching now, that I would compare to the 100 grit side. And then maybe the one here in the middle will match up with the 180 grit side. And I think these here on the right are somewhere in the middle. All right, so let me show you guys that same thing again with this McCart Nail Art Sanding Bands, all right? So it comes in 80 grit, 150 grit, and 240 grit. Now, typically, no one's going to really need an 80 grit file unless you put your acrylic on way too bulky. The 80 grit is really good to sand down that extra bulk, make the nail nice and smooth. You could use 150 grit for any of your everyday working and nail filing. And then these 240 grit nail files, this is very safe. This is almost like a buffer. So if you wanted to buff the shine off your natural nail, a 240 grit sanding band will work perfectly for that. Now I know there's a lot of die hard hand filers, meaning you don't like to use an e-file on the natural nail plate and that is absolutely fine. But remember this is a 240 grit sanding band. It is milder than the hand file that I had, which is 100 and 180 grit. So in this case, the 240 grit, even though it's on an e-file, will be safer for your nail plate than the hand file, as long as you work at a low setting. All right, ladies, now let's move on. Once you've decided on the grit of the sanding band that you're going to use, you will definitely need a mandrel. This piece right here allows you to use the sanding band. So I'm gonna show you, literally you just slide it right on into place. Boom, just like that, it should slide right on and now you are ready to go. All right, nail crew, so let's talk about these diamond drill bits. I really like these drill bits because they are very mild and they are very, very beginner friendly. So I really like these because you could use them in a back and forth motion, number one, and also they work well whether the machine is in the forward position or the reverse position. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in the drill and I'll show you what I mean. So I have the drill on and it's actually turning and everything you could hear it and it's right up on my skin it does not hurt at all so that's why i say that these are very good for beginners if you're afraid of the drill or you're new i would definitely say start out practicing with a diamond bit i have this right on my skin it's not bothering me at all so one advantage of this diamond drill bit, especially because it's so mild up against the skin, is that you could replace your cuticle pusher. So here's a standard cuticle pusher. You guys have all seen this before. But with this diamond drill bit, it's supposed to be able to eliminate this cuticle pusher. So with this diamond drill bit, I'm pushing back my cuticles and I'm removing the dead tissue and skin off my nail plate. So this is not only a time saver, but a money saver. If you don't have a cuticle pusher, guys, don't go out and buy one. Your drill probably already came with one. You just did not know how to use it. All right, so here are some other diamond drill bits that came in that set. So the ones on, let's play with the ones here on the right first. Those are barrel shaped drill bits and you could use those to refine the top of the nails. They're very mild, so they're not gonna do a, a lot of filing. You're not gonna get a good amount of filing with these, but maybe if you just wanted to soften the top of the nail, like to maybe to replace your buffer, you could use these as that, but they're not gonna do a lot of filing for you. So keep that in mind. 
All right, so now let's look at the other two drill bits. Just by looking at the shape of them, you know what they're designed to do, right? <laughs> get right along that cuticle or the sidewalls of the nail and also to get underneath the nail. Maybe you did a poly gel set and some of the poly gel and or even the acrylic spill past the free edge of the nail. You could use a mild drill bit like this just to get right up against that free edge and clean it up and make it look good as new. So in addition to the cuticle wall, the sidewalls of the nail, pushing back the cuticle, these are very good at getting underneath the nail as well. But you wanna make sure that if there's a pointy tip like that one right there, see that little pointy tip? If there's a pointed tip, you wanna be careful around any live tissue. So the hyponychium is live tissue and you don't wanna damage that with the pointy edge of this drill bit. Also, if you're doing the cuticle area, you do not wanna damage the eponychium either, okay? So just be mindful of that. Use these on a low setting and you should be okay. All right, let's talk about carbide drill bits. These are my favorite because you can really refine a nail with these drill bits, but they are not for beginners and I would not recommend any carbide drill bits for beginners at all. You could really hurt yourself. You could hurt your client. These are pointy. These are sharp and they are very, very aggressive, but aren't they so cute? All right, so let's play with them. Let me show you guys something. So I have two carbide drill bits, right? Now, the one on the left has a flat top, right? You see that flat top? Yeah. And then the one on the right has a rounded top. So the rounded top is a safety piece so that you do not cut yourself or your client. I'm going to put it in the drill so you can see how well that works. So if you had to get right up along that cuticle line and you were using a carbide drill bit, the safety piece is going to prevent you from cutting yourself or cutting your client. Now, the safety piece is not foolproof, so do not think you could turn this thing up and just go to town just because it has a safety piece on it. You still can do a lot of damage, so still use these carbide drill bits with caution, even though it says it is a safety piece. I still want you guys to be careful. Now, remember when I said the diamond drill bits, you could use going forward or reverse, and you could go right or left. You could use it in any direction. Well, most of the carbide drill bits are not the same way. Most of the carbide drill bits you can only use from right to left, and the machine has to be in a forward position. That is because the flutes or the little grooves on the carbide drill bits are set in one direction, and that is the way it is meant to be used. So these are made for right-handed people that use the drill in a forward position, and they go from right to left. If you were to go in reverse or left to right, it's not going to give you a good finished look, and then the nail might actually come out lumpy or chunky. All right, so according to my book, the cone-shaped drill bit, this is the one I'm having here. It's slim, it's long, it's tapered. It says you could use it at the cuticle. You could also use it underneath the nail, on top of the nail. You could help to prep the cuticle area for a backfill. It comes in a variety of sizes and it depends on the manufacturer. So these two drill bits, although they're shaped differently, I would use them in a similar fashion. So basically what I would do because these drill bits are so similar is I would only use one of them and then when that one got dull or rusted or what have you, then I would switch to the other one. Instead of going out and buying more and more and more, I think that would be a good way to save your money. Now this drill bit is very coarse. If you take a look at it like that, it could really cut a nail. So I don't think I would really use this one unless I did a horrible job on my acrylic and I really had to file it down and make it smooth again. So we already talked about the safety drill bit and I really like this one. I do a lot of work with these type of drill bits. This one is actually one of my favorite. I use it to file my acrylics and my poly gel. It does a very good job and I absolutely love the safety feature. Now this one, it is a flat top. And what you could do with this, if you had a pink and white, that classic pink and white, you could use a drill bit like this to refine that little smile line, especially if the person needed a fill and the smile line had grown out, this drill bit will be very good at refining that line again for you. Now this drill bit here 
is very similar to the safety drill bit that I showed you guys not too long ago, but it is a flat top. So you could also use this one to refine your small line and you could use it to cut down any bulk in your acrylic. However, it is not a safety drill bit, so you have to be careful with it. Now, another interesting drill bit that came with this set was this brush and a lot of people use it to brush off the dust off their nails under the nail around the cuticle area which is perfectly fine but i like to use it to clean off my drill bits so i pop it in the drill just the same way i would do and i just rotate that drill bit all around back and forth and really get the dust and old acrylic especially like that gel polish i get it out of the flutes with this brush and then i clean off the drill bit so this is the way that I like to use it. But honestly, you could use it either way. It works perfectly both ways. All right, guys. Now, last but not least are the ceramic drill bits. These are also from McCart. Now, the book does not go into a lot of detail about ceramic drill bits. I don't know why. But one pro that I would say ceramic drill bits have over carbide drill bits is that ceramic drill bits do not get as hot. So we know metal is a conductor of heat, whereas the ceramic drill bits are not. So you could file the nails and they're not going to get as hot as if you were using a carbide drill bit. But you still want to be very careful. You still want to use it on a low to medium setting and you still want to be mindful of the live tissue around the nail plate so here is a barrel it looks very similar to the carbide drill bits here's a barrel bit it is very coarse so you could really refine the shape of your acrylic or your poly gel you would use these exactly the same way as any other drill bit they just happen to be ceramic here is a under the nail cleaner you could tell exactly what it is just by the shape so you can clean under the nail with this drill bit. You can get right along the cuticle line if you wanted to make that line nice and flush, or maybe you wanted to clean it off because you were preparing to do a backfill. It's really just up to you. And then these sets also come with that safety drill bit. You see that round one there in the back with the green tip? That's a safety drill bit, very similar to the carbide drill bit. So whichever one you feel comfortable using, whether it be carbide or ceramic because it does not heat up, that is totally up to you all right now before i wrap this up guys i just want to show you when you are using a drill you want to make sure you hold it like a pencil it should fit comfortably in your hand and then you want to use your pinky as a balancing finger the book calls it a fulcrum finger so you're going to balance the pinky of your drill hand the hand that you're using the drill with take that pinky and you're going to balance it on the supporting hand. So the hand that's supporting the nail, you're going to make contact with that hand and the pinky of the drill hand. And that is going to help you balance when you're using the drill. That's supposed to give you more stability. That's supposed to make you feel a little bit more comfortable when using the drill. In addition to that, I like to rest my wrist or my forearm on the table so that there's not a lot of shaking going on and I feel stable and then my client feels a little bit more comfortable, okay? So here I am, you see me balancing that pinky and the hand is not going all over the place. I just feel super supported. All right, so once you're done with the set and you love it, the client's happy, it's time to clean up. I want you guys to know that the Arbor Band, these sanding bands are not reusable. You cannot disinfect them because they're made of paper. So once you're done using them, you have to toss them. What I like to do though, is I save my used one and I only use them on Becky or Nala. So my practice hands, I use the older bands because I don't wanna you know, waste my really good expensive sanding bands. So that's what I do. Now for the carbide drill bits and the ceramic drill bits, those can be disinfected. So here is the book. I'm just showing you guys a couple pages in the book. The way you clean these drill bits is you rinse them off with soap and water. Then you put them in the disinfectant solution. You don't want them to sit more than 10 minutes because sometimes they can rust and more than 10 minutes is just overkill, okay? Once you take that out of the disinfectant solution, you rinse them off, you towel dry them, and now you can store them and they are ready for your next client. 
All right, now, crew, I have to share this with you. I have a diamond drill bit here in my drill, and I am removing a callus with it. So the book talked about several different drill bits can be used to remove calluses. A diamond drill bit is safe. Even the sanding bands are safe to remove a callus. So I was like, okay, I have to try this. I just have to. So my friend here has calluses, and he was like, sure, you can practice on me. Great. Give me those feet. So as you can tell, I am just using the drill. I am trying to go in one direction. I'm not applying too much pressure. And I'm constantly asking him, do you feel that? Does that hurt? Is it burning? Is it too hot? And he's like, no, it feels fine. It feels fine. So I'm like shook. This, like I could see the skin just melting away, but he does not feel it at all. Like I was so shook by this. You could, If you look, you could see like the dust of the foot like just filing off and it it didn't cause him any pain at all so i thought it was awesome so once i was done i went ahead and put a little bit of cuticle oil on that toe just to you know further soften it up here's a closer picture of it right there is a little bit of callus left but i read in the book you do not want to remove the callus completely you want to leave a little bit there because if you remove all of it at once the callus may grow back thicker the next time so keep that in mind so there's what the other foot looks like and look at this one Whoa, like a brand new toe I can't even believe it, y'all. So I went ahead and removed the other callus off camera. And look at that before and after action, guys. What? Oh, 99.9% .9 better. 99.9% .9 better. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my gosh. All right, now, crew, that's all I have for you today. I'm going to wrap it up before this video is too long. I hope you found this video very informative. I love doing these school vlogs with you guys, but I've been falling behind because I've just been so busy. I've been so busy, and I apologize. But thank you guys for being patient. Thank you guys for rocking with me till the end. Click on one of these two videos, and I will see you in my next one. Love you guys so much. Mwah.